First, I'd like to thank the organiser for giving me the opportunity to speak today. And it's a, a slight change of pace where we go back to uh, looking at kind of uh, preclinical and clinical development of biologics. I'm actually head of uh, immunoassay in, in Aperture at Verona, and I'm responsible for the immunology department, which I'll go to in a moment. But today, really, I, I want to cover um, quite a wide area. I want to uh, give an indication of where in vitro assays can actually help uh, develop a biological compounds. Um, and just a good point to start with, really, is that although in vitro assays are very useful, a very useful tool, they do not replace complex in vivo studies with, with patients. So they're a good way of bridging from preclinical to clinical, but they certainly don't replace anything in terms of clinical evaluation. Um, but I will start really with the T. Janeiro clinical study and, and, and look at that study and, and how that has really affected uh, the way monoclonal antibodies are, are being developed and also the learning lessons that we can take from that study. Then I will look at immunotoxicity, immune function assessment, and immunogenicity, and how in vitro assays can actually help and support the, the development of, uh, of biologics. And then I'm actually going to give a specific case study where I actually show some of the assays that we've been working on in our laboratory in Verona and, and some of the work that we're continuing to work on because we're, we're, um, these assays have been used for many different types of compounds. So, so in terms of my lab, actually, um, we, we're doing immunoassays for, for pharmacokinetic and toxicokinetics. We're also doing immunogenicity, anti-drug antibodies, as well as immunotoxicity assessments. But we're also looking at biomarkers, functional activity assays, Ehlers spot flow cytometry, et cetera. And uh, we, we have a wide, we've been working on a wide uh, variety of different products, uh, biologics, re recombinant proteins, and uh, a large amount of monoclonal antibodies. So this is quite a big area for us. So going to T. Gennaro clinical studies, who was briefly mentioned this morning uh, during the regulatory talk, and I want to take it more from a scientific perspective. Um, everybody probably knows this was a biological drug tested in, in London in uh, Northwich Park in March 2006, and it was a humanized uh, IgG4 antibody targeting CD28, um, and uh, it was uh, basically a super agonist uh, of the, the T cell receptor, and it caused uh, a massive cytokine release and cytokine shock uh, with six healthy volunteers. Um, and uh, I mean, it was indicated that this drug would be used in oncology, so it, it was uh, designed to be an immune stimulatory agent. But obviously, this was the result um, during the clinical trial with pretty much very, very adverse uh, reactions with all six patients. And obviously, it was well reported in the press, and uh, biology has got a bad name uh, with all the newspapers, Elephant Man here. Um, and, it, and it really um, allowed a sort of unrealistic view of the, the, of, of the development of biological drugs. But what can we actually uh, take from, from, this, from the development of this compound? I think that this in very important learning points from, the, from this compound. I think the, w one of the, the main changes in phase one units, uh, in, uh, particularly in the UK, is that you know, everyone now is associated with an accident and emergency unit, and that seemed to be uh, very important, that if you do get adverse effects, you can get people